Hello everybody, it is Tommy and Squint and Brenton. We are here announcing that we will be playing the Total War Three Kingdoms in a co-op form. And this is basically an intro video um, for the choosing of our faction. So what we're going to be doing here is running through sort of the situation with the Three Kingdoms in um, what is ancient China. And we'll be looking at the factions that we'll play and basically give you the choice to control this campaign. So immediately um, there are a few things to get out of the way. Uh, the first being there are two game modes in which Total War is played, mm -hmm. the Romance and the Classic. So the Romance mode is sort of um, obviously in the, the name. The fantasy. Yeah, the fantasy, fantasy the highly version. romanticized account of it. So your generals are kind of like superheroes, which sort of leans on their Warhammer-like... Um, Godlike status. Yeah, I mean. yeah, where, where you've got these men in battle who can take on you know a, a full 100 men and come out... Um, and I assume the historical events of this game are also more romanticized. So I imagine things sort of shift a little more predictably in terms of political actions and the twists that happen in total war campaigns. Um, and that is one of the options alternatively. And that option, by the way, encompasses the general's ability where you build up your general, like he's some sort of dynasty warriors, superhero, He's then, the one that's going to win yeah. your fights for you. Yeah, you play, yeah. You play your game mode around him. Yeah, you build you build everything around, yeah, which can be more memorable, and if that's the way that you want it to be played, then so be it. The alternative mode is the classic mode, which is based on the records of the Three Kingdoms, um, and which they say it's meant to be the more historically accurate version. And in classic, the generals have their powers removed and aren't commanded separately, so they're commanded like a command, I imagine, like commanders were in Total Wars prior. Defended come well with, hidden, yeah. yeah. King, King's Guard and you send them at the back. You don't ever <laughs> yeah. have them sort of run in. Um, and there are a few things when doing a co-op campaign that we should take into account. So first off, we are going to be playing under an alliance um, in an attempt to conquer or rewrite China's history based on our desire. We'll see, though. I don't I don't really like Tom, but we'll have to you know, <laughs> yeah, we'll, work together we'll work, here. We'll work together and see where it takes us. There are... Three kingdoms, obviously, in the name. One led by Kiao Kiao, uh, the second one led by Xu Zhuan, and the other one led by Lu Bei. Um, and the other ones, apart from that, are all little sub-warlords. So, look, we'll give you the option. So the first one here is Kiao Kiao. Kiao Kiao is sort of known as this evil sort of um, imperialist who rose up, pretty much stole the north, and now is at war with the three kingdoms. He starts up north. Obviously, their military might is is what they would be known for. He's under the legendary character trait. Um, I'm sure as the game goes on, we'll figure out more of it, but pretty much their kingdom is uh, started central and north. And they, they want to push down on the two opposing kingdoms. Uh, I can't remember what they're... What are they called again? The, they're, uh, the kingdom of uh, Sun Chuan and Lu Wei. Yeah, Wu and Shu Han. So yeah. they're the ones below, and uh, so the, the power historically, struggle. yeah, well, historically the two the two southern um, provinces they they unite to fight against Cao Cao. So you know we don't know what if if that's what we want to play or we want to go yeah. as. So so keep warlords. in mind keep in mind everything that you choose in terms of a commander. You need to take into whether it's the romance or the classic version because that mm. will change those events. That that exact that sort of alliance is the type that. Um, I assume the romance version and stuff would have those big differences on. Second one, Su Xuan. So the other, uh, one of the other ones, the leader of the Sun Wu, and he's the, I assume this is the Westerly? Yes. Yep. I think so. so, so uh, <laughs> it's, very, it's very difficult. There's a lot of names that are hard to pronounce, a lot of places that we don't know, and we're trying to... Yeah, and, and I'll be the first to, to admit, yeah. we, we know, we know I, we've done some basic overlook, China is not our exact. Um, it is difficult. We're not well well yeah, rehearsed. Well, on well it. versed in in Chinese sort of history. So, um, descendant of the legendary Sun Tzu himself, Sun Shane, and that westerly um, south, you know, south center west China is one of the options. Keep in mind, he's part of that um, big ass three kingdoms that will be warring, mm. no doubt. The next one, we'll jump straight into it. Lu Bei, uh, Lu Bei will be the other one, um, the last of the three kingdoms. Yes. Um, faction resource, unity, legendary commander. Same again, another legendary character um, who starts in the Dong province. So this so is the, on east, the yeah, yeah. easterly side um, in which I guess 
I guess this is one where, like, if you want us to go one of the three kingdoms, then one of us will ultimately have to play as a warlord faction to complement it. Yeah, you can't, um, can't go. Yeah, I mean, it'd be absolute. I mean, if you vote for it, we can. But <laughs> it's all it's all down on the votes. Is well, yeah. we want to see what you guys want to. But the want first, to do. the first that we move into here, Liu Bao, Liu Bei. Um, he starts. Oh no, this is Liu Bei. the same person. Um, oh no, sorry, Liu Biao. Liu Biao. Liu Biao starts in the. He's an aristocrat, part of the warlord, it's sort, sort of, of in that central, almost almost center, center south and he sort of smudged in between all three of the factions so things could get incredibly messy but he <laughs> we, is in a central sort does. of area um, the main reason we're focusing this on geographic location being the important decider is because ultimately it is mm. uh, the next one Zhang Yan and Zhangy boy uh, is a champion king of the Black Mountain real militarized not an aristocrat um, and he comes from North, Top left. North, so like yeah. bordering on Mongolia sort of thing. Which right behind the forces of Kiao Kiao, he's obviously someone that if Kiao Kiao starts to fall, he would have definitely an interest in... Um, coming on, come, swooping on yeah, in. Yes, swooping on in on, on, a, on a routing north. Uh, the next one we'll move into was Yang Shuo. Uh, not the rapper, but the Chinese... <laughs> Dragon, uh, legendary commander. Well, uh, another rapper as well. Yeah, no, no, Chinese dragon. <laughs> and, yeah, the, another one <laughs> that comes in. He's sort of as well. Um, central one, right, central top. central right. And what they say is his starting position is relatively safe. Gives him the option to sort of unify the the Wei commandery, which is the local sort of area. A lot of farmlands and agriculturally rich. He's a he's a general in a, a thriving realm, um, but at the same point. He is in that northeast where he would have two of the three kingdoms. Yeah, um, fucking on pre- him. Pre- I mean. Presenting a threat to his yeah, pretty much presenting a threat to his entire um, existence. Zhang Zhuang, uh, Zhang Zhuang. She's That's a female. A female, yeah. Which yeah. is which is sick. I, I I absolutely think that the idea that this game's got this legendary champion warrior female, the Bandit Queen, um, as she's known, cool faction. Let's see where. They're we're, located. We're location top left again, top or left, far so left. west. So further west. Um, the early game is about setting up a cohort base of operations. Regional income sources need to be exploited in order to fund her banditry. So she's a real bandit. Not so when raiding. We, when we stuff. say okay. when we say a warlord, she is traditionally not an established empire. Be very hard to play, but I guarantee her armies and the military resolve that she would had. Well, she would have is is something that you'll want to consider if we were to pair with one of the three kingdoms. The next one, Kong Rong, someone I'm very interested in. So he's a legendary strategist. He's a scholar, so obviously the brains of his faction. Um, so he's someone that's backed education, real sort of no- normal dude. This guy is like th- this is a smart boy, and he's, he's coastal. Like, co- he's yeah, coastal. Center right around the coast. Um, he fights against the yellow yellow turbans so uh, as seen here so that'd be the leftover yellow turbans and uh, any rebellion that was still over his base of operations after capturing bono livestock so he sort of runs this they don't know whether he wants to uh, re-establish his sort of land as you can see here Mears, it's a small little slither that he owns with multiple neighbors just, just and, jutting that, out. and that's and that's not even the three kingdoms that's just other Little factions. No, no, he's he's quite quite surrounded, but everyone's surrounded. There's so many factions, and here. and I guess he's choice with does he conquer the nearby or does he play the, you know, bit, rolling yeah. the rolling sort of I'm mobile, not ever setting down. Well, we we like thing. the coastal ones because you get that freedom of trade routes and whatnot yeah, I, from yes, other yeah. um, and, total and, war games and coast co- being pushed up against the coast means obviously navy. safe safe one side yeah and you can build a navy that will secure you and it lets if we're playing as two separate factions we're able to transmit pretty quickly between each other if we have the navy to back it we need um, to there are other factions we're not going to mention the ones that are dlc ones or anything like that we want to play the base game um, the last two here are the Yun Shuang and Yun Shuang. So legendary commander, ambitious power monger. Um, there's legitimacy to his claim. So, I mean, he's obviously someone that just wants power. 
Um, we look at him again, sort of central. Central. Yeah. Uh, it's one of the most difficult in the game, situated next to the formidable Lu Buao. Yuan Shun's territory is also within striking range of Dong Zhuo, while the cunning Cao Cao lies to the east. So he's actually sort of westerly. Yeah. I'm central. not going to lie. I don't want to be that guy. Uh... <laughs> um, he, he's obviously under pressure from two empires and then the other warlords themselves who have turned against him. Um, the next one here, Gong Shong Zhuo. And this will be our final one without looking at the others. And Gong Sung Zhuan is uh, an Iron Fist general, legendary vanguard, so sort of a high-ranking military noble who's who's come to to rise war, over his proper warlord. Yeah, like when when we say proper warlord, this is the commander turned leader sort of deal. And he's very interesting, Miz. He could pair up well with Dong Kong because he's northeast well, coastal. He's up north. He's on the coast. Yeah, I like that. That's that's cool. I like You're, that a lot. So actually. his rival is Liu Yao. A significant threat is to the west. So uh, you, the defender of the north. To defeat him, the neighbors grow more powerful. So, um, and obviously they mention here, unless you can find a way to negotiate. So he's immediately under pressure from all his neighbors, being a coastal faction. He'd be immediately on the defense. But these are the things we'll have to consider. These are all the factions. We want you to choose our first Let's Play All Air on the game's uh, release date. We weren't lucky enough to receive an early copy from the developers, as they seem to, for some reason, Total, oh, Total yeah. War wants to uh, cut in and have their own Let's Plays. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> not even going to, yeah. We're well, doing our thing. We're doing our thing. Yeah, and so we've given you the options here. We'd love for you to pick the factions that... Um, that we would play, combining as our nice little coalition. Um, Look, we're yes. hoping a lot of you know a lot more about this and can uh, yeah, give us and, a bit of insight. And, e and even if you don't, drop it in. Just say, "Look, I just want to see." Just uh, watch what we two yeah, idiots tell, stuffing yeah. around T in Chinese tell us, history. <laughs> tell us what you want to see. And um, this this is the first campaign of Three Kingdoms we do. We may be doing more, uh, depending on the demand, obviously. Um, but let us know. We'll have this one uh, filmed and recorded almost daily, so that we can have it crank, you know, mm. cranking out every three days or, yeah, or more or sure. less, a, a more consistent than we've been known for here on the channel. Mm. So let us know. Drop the comments. Throw the thumbs up. We're very interested in what you have to say. Uh, it's a game where the the, the precedent of its storyline taking place in ancient China isn't familiar to us, but by the end of it, hopefully it will be, or at mm. least some some twisted version of alternate history that I've How about are we going to fantasy head. or are we going to the classic, you <laughs> yeah. know, like what are we doing here? Um, but let us know, drop the comments, leave it, stick around because the 2620 will be playing Total War The Three Kingdoms. We'll see you all on the 24th in which the game comes out and you can expect the first episode then. So we'll let you know how, uh, how it goes from there and uh, keep you informed. Subscribe, we'll see you later.